uh, welcome Will Rocha, uh, who will be talking about the Leiden ICE database for astrochemistry. Yes. So, hello everyone. My name is Will Rocha, and then I'm from Leiden Observatory in the Netherlands. And it's a great pleasure for me to be here and be talking uh, in this symposium. And I also was very uh, good in the morning to see the plenary talks about the legacy of uh, Charlotte Moore and also learn a little bit uh, with her uh, contributions. So it's a great pleasure for me to contribute also to this symposium. All right, so let's start then with uh, the great news about James Webb. So we already uh, saw these beautiful images from different regions of the universe. And actually, this uh, is related to the JWST science goals that goes from early universe, galaxies over time, star life cycle, and also other worlds. Beautiful images, and this talk actually is very well linked with this part, that star life cycle. Well, let's start this with this big picture that goes from the molar cloud to the formation of the solar systems. Inside these clouds, where the density is very high and temperature is very low, some atoms can stick on the surface of the grains and uh, some ices can be formed. Some molecules can be formed in the solid phase and eventually complex organic molecules can also be formed. For example, ethanol, dimethyl ether, methylamine. And once they are formed, they can uh, be transported to other stages, like for example, protostars and uh, protoplanetary disks. And since they are present, they can be uh, integrated to comets and late can be delivered to young planets, for example. So it's very important to trace the journey of these cones from one stage to another. And these are goals of the JWST, as for example, to shed light on key questions about the origin of the complex organic molecules, and of course, understand better the physics and the chemistry in star formed regions. And I must say that ices are being observed now, and uh, it's also a very uh, great pleasure for me to present one of the data that we got recently with JWST, which is part of the ERS ICH program. So this ERS ICH program is coordinated by Professor Melissa McClure, Adwin Bugert, and Professor Herr Linutz in Leiden. And here I'm showing the comparison of the white spectrum, that's the data from JWST, compared to other species observations. I put question marks in all the molecules because we are still analyzing this data and uh, we are seeing some nice things and I hope to share uh, new results in the near future uh, with you. All right, so not only the ICH, but also we have uh, another program that we will be collecting ICES as well. That's the JOYCE program that uh, stands for the James Webb Observations of Young Protostars, and this is coordinated by Professor Ivina Van Souk in Leiden. So loads of data are arriving, and the question is, how to interpret them? Well, I would say that we need a bigger database. That's one of the ways, right? And before I start talking about LIDA itself, I just want to mention that LIDA is coordinated by the Leiden Laboratory for Astrophysics, it has started in 1975 with Professor Mario Greenberg. And after him, uh, was coordinated by Professor Vino Van Suk for more than 10 years, and also Professor Stefan, and currently is coordinated by Professor Herod uh, in Leiden. Well, Leiden, uh, sorry, LIDA has been in operation actually since the 90s and has been useful, extremely, uh, extremely important for the interpretation of uh, satellite emissions and also ground-based telescopes. For example, ISO, SPITZE, and the VLT. However, uh, no cons data were available in the database in that time. Then uh, we had an upgrade of the, in, of the database in 2015 uh, by an internship student in Leiden, Bart Osorn who uh, integrated the database that was split in different uh, websites and he put everything in just one, part, uh, one server. And then, as I said, last year I started working on this database and improving visualization, searching capability, inclusion of complex organic molecules, also refractive indexes, and creation of the online tools to support JWST data interpretation. So, the molecules that we have covered in LIDA, they can be uh, 
divided in the securely detected or likely tentative detected molecules. So for the securely detected molecules, we have data in different chemical conditions and also mixtures and temperatures as well, as well as we have the same for the likely and tentative detected molecules. So we have also ions in this database that actually part of a collaboration with a uh, university in Spain. So the goals, of course, with JWST is to convert these orange and red uh, symbols to these green check marks because it wants to detect these molecules once and for all in ISIS. And this is the main goal. So LIDA is capable to do that in the sense that we have already the infrared spectrum to uh, be compared with the observations. I also want to acknowledge the people that have been working uh, daily in the laboratory with these measurements, and I want to start with uh, Jeroen Tervisko van Skeltinger, that has been working on the measurements of acetaldehyde, ethanol, dimethylether, and methylformate. After him, uh, Marina Gomes Rashid uh, worked with acetona, uh, sorry, acetone, methylamine, methylcyanide, and for, uh, formaldehyde. And uh, late, actually, uh, there is a PhD student in the group working uh, with formamide, acetylene, and uh, H2S. So there is a lot of data coming uh, from the lab, and they are mostly included already uh, in the database. So if you look for the numbers, actually, LIDA uh, contains 160 ICE analogs, which means different uh, ICE samples. So for example, pure water is one ice analog, and water with CO2 is another ice analog. And in total, we have more than a thousand different infrared spectrum of all these molecules. So uh, most, most of this data actually corresponds to binary ice samples. So uh, we have, as I said, water, CO2, CO, CO2, uh, molecules like that, and also complex organic molecules. And the other half percent uh, of the database goes for the ternary, pure, quaternary, and five components ice uh, samples. Altogether, this data can trace thermal processing, energetic processing, and also effects of the chemical environment. So this is one of these uh, spectrum that we have available in the database uh, for foreign key acid, and I have worked a little bit on the improvement on the data visualization. And now we can interact with the plot in the sense that you can zoom in, zoom out, for example. You can also download the plot if you want. You can also play a little bit with the legends and uh, highlight one spectrum if you want. And I have included also these annotations for the vibrational modes. So you can see uh, the vibrational modes for each band that you are uh, seeing in the spectrum. And also we have a plot information like, for example, the wave number, wavelength, and the absorbance uh, of the data. Also in the same page, when you are looking for one specific molecule, you can also see the 3D molecule viewer. And this is linked uh, with GSMO. And GSMO actually shows the 3D uh, geometry of this molecule. And also I have calculated the vibrational modes myself, and I included them uh, in the database, so you can animate as well the normal vibrational modes of these molecules. There are uh, many buttons that you can also interact uh, with this plot. Making movies is also possible, or even download a simple image if you want. And also, if you are looking for an uh, ice sample that's a mixture, let's say water and uh, ethanol, the view will only show one of the samples, not everything. So if you want to search for the other one, like for example ethanol, you can just uh, type ethanol name in the search box and there you see, because lead is also linked with the PubCan uh, database. Now the data that we have is the ice refractive index. In particular, in the moment, we have only for the water ice, and it covers from uh, UVV's range until the mid-infrared. And I want to mention this first part that uh, comes from the OASIS measurement. And OASIS is one of the experimental setups that we have in lighting. I'm currently working on this setup, and it stands for the optical absorption setup for ice spectroscopy, and we measure the, directly the refractive index of the ice during the ice deposition. And once we have this information, we can calculate the refractive index in the mid infrared. So, I want to highlight this part that comes from OASIS measurements because we see a clear dependence of the refractive index with the temperature. And I want to highlight this because compared to previous uh, measurements, uh, the values are not the same. 
and I have a writer paper in preparation showing that these differences also lead to different ice column densities as measured from the observations. So it's very important to use accurate uh, refractive index as we already saw uh, in the talks in this morning. More data is coming and I've been supervising uh, some students in the lab and also having the support from a PhD student. So we have measured all the molecules and most recently the setup has been upgraded to also collect the refractive index of uh, mixtures, not only pure molecules. Moving now to the online tools, first one I want to mention is SpecPhi. That's a tool to create synthetic spectrum of protostars. And it works in three steps. First one, you set the wavelength range that you want to work on. Let's say that you want to use 2.5 to 20 microns. Next step, you can directly uh, get the data from the database and create your synthetic spectrum in an optical depth scale. So let's say that you select this sample water CO2 at temperature of 15K, and then you set a column density of 10 to, 12, uh, 10 to 17 molecules per square centimeter. And you can create a model like that and compare with the observations. So in black, we have a spectrum of a high mass protostar. And in orange, we have the model that I created uh, for this uh, particular example. Finally, you can convert this spectrum from optical depth to a flux scale. So you can use the continuous CD uh, that's available from in the literature. I just compiled this information, put in the database, and you can use from different objects. So for example, I'm showing here the same spectrum that you see in the top, but now in a flux scale, considering different SD continuum. So you see that you have an offset in the y-axis because of the luminosity of the object. This has some applications. So for example, if you are running chemical models, you can calculate the uh, numerical density of uh, your molecule. And here I'm showing a particular example that I run myself for methanol in different uh, surface chemistry conditions and also gas phase. And from this number, you can calculate your column density. So you can use this information to uh, create your synthetic spectrum if you want. Other kind of application is that you can also propose for the GWST. For example, if you go for the exposure time calculator, you can upload a synthetic spectrum and see how much time you need with the telescope to observe one particular molecule. And this is also possible because you can download the synthetic spectrum, upload here to this ETC, and have uh, the output. The last online tool is the online refractive index calculator. And we have a simple uh, interface for this. So first you have to upload your absorbance spectrum. So for example, if you have data from all the laboratories, you can do that. And also you can insert some information, like for example, the thickness of the eyes, refractive index of the substrate, refractive index in the visible light, and also the criteria, uh, stopping criteria, that's the map. Once you start the calculation, you have your output in about one to three seconds. And then uh, on the right part, I'm showing the example for the uh, water refractive index uh, at 30K. So you see the real and the imaginary part of this refractive index. And one of the outputs is also uh, a direct input for the code optool. And this code in particular is, uh, can create some models of uh, opacity models of ice grains. So, when you run this code online tool, you can have the output for other tools like Optool. Another uh, thing about LIDA is the search capability. So you can also search for these chemical bonds. That's useful if you are uh, looking for molecules sharing the same functional groups. So for example, if you enter here uh, LIDA, I don't know. For example, CO, you see uh, several molecules and one of these is the uh, formic acid that I'm showing here in this plot uh, in red. And then we can compare with observations as well. And then you can have information about the bands that we're seeing uh, from the telescopes. And on the right side, I'm showing the atoms that are involved uh, in these vibrational modes. So you can also do that using LIDA. And I want to mention that uh, People are assessing uh, the database, so I created myself this tracker tool that's very simple. 
but give us the right information about how many access we had since uh, October 2021. And I did that this morning. So I looked at the website this morning. And these are the numbers that we're having. So if you look for this uh, October last year, we had about 30 access only. But then we started revising the database again, and then the numbers are increasing uh, quite a lot. And if you see per year, so that's the comparison. So uh, only this year we have almost 10,000 uh, access. So I forgot to upgrade the title of this slide, but this is not access. This is actually the number of downloads per IC analog. And I was not expecting that, because you see that the most downloaded data is for the pure formic acid. Then you have formic acid with methanol and also CO and CO2. So I was expecting people download most of the water data, but actually it's not the case. So it's interesting to see that as well. For the future, so we are expecting to include, of course, more complex uh, reflective indexes. I'm also calculating ice grain opacities that will be available in the database. And also we want to upgrade the online tools. So this, uh, we have already started some uh, projects with master students that uh, be able to do that as well. And uh, not only for the James Webb, but LIDA will support the spherics data interpretation. So if you don't know spherics yet, that's the telescope that stands for the spectrophotometer for the history of the universe, epoch of ionization, and the ice explorer. And we have a uh, exposition of spherics uh, close to the post session as well. And I have already started discussing how LIDA can be used to support the spherics uh, data interpretation. And we are already tracing some plans uh, to do that. If you want to know more about LIDA, you can check the Read the Docs documentation. So that's the online documentation you, where you can read more about the technical part and uh, have some examples and uh, tutorials on how to work uh, with the database. Not only that, but also if you have data and you want to share with us, so you can also contact uh, me uh, or even Professor Harold Linnitz, and we'll be happy to include your data in our database. My take home message is that LIDA offers a comprehensive list and easy access to the infrared experimental data. UVVs and mid infrared temperature dependent refractive index values are being included. The online tools are handful for quick analysis and the refractive index calculation. Of course, if you need something more detailed, uh, there are other uh, codes that are able to do that. LIDA is capable of helping uh, the JWST and also spherics data interpretation. And last but not least, LIDA is a ERS ICH deliverable. So just want to finalize with my acknowledgments of the financial support of this work. And also I want to thank the IAU for giving me the opportunity to talk uh, today. Thank you very much. Okay, yep. Open, open up for questions. Uh, I'm gonna remind uh, virtual viewers to please include questions in the chat if you have them. Mm -hmm. uh, do the, these uh, spectra of ice particles depend uh, on the sizes and uh, shapes of the particles. I would think that if you look at absorption spectra of icy uh, uh, particle clouds, uh, these factors would uh, be significant. What, what do you think? Yes, uh, actually during the measurements, we, uh, we do not see much uh, effect on the, on the chemistry in that sense. So if you have in the laboratory an ice that's composed by one monolayer, or 20 monolayers, you just see an increasing of the bands. But this is a real problem that you have to take into account when you are doing the modeling. And in fact, most of these bands, they are sensitive to the grain shape as well. So if you consider a grain that's uh, spherical, or even it's not spherical, but it's, uh, like ellipse, ellipsoidal grain, it changes the, the shape of the bands. And not all the, the bands, but let's say for water, uh, the band at three microns and six microns is not sensitive to the grain shape. But if you look for the libration band of water around 12 microns, it shifts in the uh, infrared spectrum. 
So it's an important ingredient that you have to take into account during modeling. Any more in-person questions? I haven't checked it yet, um, but I have been was, uh, using a little bit Ghost, and Ghost uh, we see, for example, for ammonia, we don't have infrared spectrum, we only have optical constants, and in LIDAR we do have the absorbed spectrum.